Oh, you can see it there. Brittany Griner. Day two. Day two uh, of her life, her new life now. Uh, coming back home after a nearly 300 day odyssey in Russia. Uh, and so you see her there. Just great. I, 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 I don't know about you guys, whether you're watching or listening. I can't see this enough. Just to see the uh, just the happiness, to see the joy, uh, also to uh, to see Brittany's wife and and uh, hear President Biden and Vice President Harris talk about what the reality is now. The reality is finally it's over. Uh, she's back home. So I we got all these smart folks on the screen. <laughs> I'm gonna do a lot of listening. I'm gonna do a lot of listening. Natalie is here. Uh, Chastity Melvin is here, and so is Ari Chambers. A lot of great basketball minds, a lot of great minds, period. So uh, I'll start with you, Ari. Uh, what, what were your thoughts and what are your thoughts now that you've had a day to process uh, everything, all the news that we got yesterday morning? Uh, what are your thoughts now? My initial thought was hysterical crying. Very happy for Brittany after 294 days, finally back, back home. Um, the hope was, you know, that she'd be back before now, but we can only focus on going forward. So just knowing that she's on that plane, I believe she landed at five Eastern um, today in San Antonio. And just knowing that she is being reunited with her Hello? rock, her family, her friends, um, everybody who you know, cares about her. And she can come back knowing that so many people fought for her. Nobody forgot her. And then she can be home for the holidays. It's really special. Chastity, how about you? I was overjoyed. Uh, I woke up that morning. I had so many text messages. I try not to get on social media the first thing in the morning, but I have been praying. That as soon as I get on Twitter, I do see that Brittany has been released and she's on her way home. And for me, it felt like uh, I felt a burden that was kind of lifted off me that I didn't even know I was carrying. You know, it was very hard for me to be on social media because there's been so many hateful things being said. And now I thought it would be better, but it's probably got worse now that she's back home. But at the end of the day, I don't care. You know, she deserves to be home. And I'm, I'm very happy she's back with her family foremost. And, uh, you know, just for her friends and everyone that cares about her, Phoenix Organiz Phoenix Mercury organization. Uh, just, I'm just happy that she's back. I really am. Overjoyed. Is overjoyed? Is that where you are, Natalie? You're in the overjoyed space? <laughs> Of course, I'm overjoyed, but I too was just overcome with emotion. I couldn't stop crying yesterday. So, um, and then I'm also very bothered by some of the comments as well. So, um, but I'm just so happy she's home, like, and that God answered all of our prayers. And I'm so happy for her family, her wife, the W. Like, it just, I'm so happy for her and thankful. Well, and we'll Gratitude go, we'll, is what I feel. Yeah. And I, and I do, I want to, you know, we'll get to those comments in a second. Um, I know Chastity, you know, uh, BG very well. You know, wh wh what were your thoughts? Forget, forget about yesterday for a second, go back. You know, what were your thoughts based on your knowledge of her? What were your thoughts when she was going through this day 50, day 100, day 200? Uh, what were some of the thoughts you had then? Well, I knew it was, it was definitely mentally challenging for her. Like I've told a, a lot of people that come up to me and ask me about BG, it's one thing to live in another country for seven months and play basketball. It's already taxing enough to be away from your family and friends. Um, to be over there and not be playing basketball and also to be locked up and be in handcuffs, like I can't even imagine. Like every, every time I arrive back home from whatever country I had been in for the last seven or eight months, it took me a readjustment period being back stateside and um, I had a lot of lonely times over there and just like so every day just I kept telling people like you have no idea what she's going through so for me um, my thoughts were always with her every day like it, it had to be extremely traumatic for her because it, it's just hard being over there by yourself uh, playing basketball especially in Russia when it's freezing cold and dreary and depressing weather yeah. like crazy can't imagine <laughs> Yeah, we had some conversations yesterday, Ari, about you know the WNBA and, and what can we do now? What can we do to support? Uh, we had there was so much support uh, for Brittany from WNBA players and players in other sports. Bring Brittany home, and then there was a, a, a like an outpouring of support from some of those same athletes when they heard the news 
But uh, I, I know we were talking to Tarika Foster, Brasby, and others yesterday who said, okay, if you really want to support the WNBA, why don't you go to the games? Okay, why don't we go to the games? Why don't we start talking about the WNBA uh, in a different way? Uh, uh, those are just two suggestions. Uh, would you like to add on? Is there anything else we can uh, do You know, now? I would. I'm over here. Yeah. Yes, I'm looking at Nat's shirt, and I'm like, protect them, love them, see them. And I think it's really important um, aspect of it all. Tarika said go to games because visibility matters. Because you can't protect and you can't speak up against or speak up for what you don't know. And so as long as you pay mind to the league, despite um, the negative things that might come out, why don't you pay mind to the positive things? Why don't you pay mind to the game? These players, find mm. a player that you like. Um, draw yourself to them. Follow their journey. Even if it's just from college through the pros. Like just, just attach yourself to some aspect of the professional game and not mm. when it's to tragedy. And so you can love them and, and you can cause others to see them so that if they are in situations like that, you can protect them. What we can do is, I mean, you know, preaching the choir right here, but I can bring a friend to the game that's never been before. I brought my friend Faven last season. I'm a season ticket holder for the New York Liberty, a paid season ticket holder for the Liberty, even though I don't necessarily have to do that, but I'm pouring into the into the league. I'm, I'm making sure that I'm visible. I am there. They can be visible. I'm capturing content. I'm on social media. I'm pushing for, you know, the future of the league to be more visible. And that's what we have to do. We have to push because people who are the investors of this need to know that the demand is there. So as long as we make sure we're on the forefront um, of, of showing up for them like they show up for the world, that's how you can trickle down and make more investments happen so that the visibility can happen um, through like a network situation. Chastity, you see that headline up there about the WNBA incentivizing its players to stay home rather than going overseas. Is there enough? Is there enough of an incentive where you can say, Okay, I'll do that if I want to, but I don't need to do it. I, I, I can I can do my business right here. And if that's not happening, how can we make that happen? No, I love that. I mean, we didn't have those opportunities back in the day when I played, so we had to supplement our income. You know, uh, Michael, if you know the history of any professional sport, back in the day, the NFL players, after their season ended, they got jobs, <laughs> you know, to supplement their income. So it's not a new story that athletes starting out with the new – um, a, a new organization or just, you know, a new um, professional sports team, they have to do other things to supplement their income if they're not having guaranteed contracts and, and making tons of money. Um, so I'm, I'm excited that the president is doing that. And there are tons of opportunity, opportunity for players to stay at home. And now what they can do with their social media platforms and how they can make money from home and, and supplement their incomes in that way. Um, is definitely a plus. But it's also, I mean, some players like to go to other countries and play basketball and make money. Now, I don't know that players can make a million dollars, what, you know, a million or more dollars what is what Brittany Griner was making in Russia. You know, so with that being said, like, our community, you know, there's only a small opportunity. You know, I'm a big dreamer, but if you have that type of contract, and that opportunity, you want to take advantage of it because you never know when it'll come back around. So at the end of the day, I do think it's a personal choice, but I would like to see the season extended and obviously more opportunities, more money for the ladies not to, to want to steer more towards staying at home in the States and building the league and being more. So as Ari says, the WBA is so important. So more of the fans can continue to see them and continue to, because it's one thing to, find a player you want to follow them in the WNBA. And then as soon as the season's over, we're overseas and everybody's wondering what happened, what are they, where are they? You know, I can't really follow my favorite player. Although social media makes that more accessible now, it's still very difficult and challenging when there's another basketball, when all the other basketball seasons are going on, NBA, college, rec, semi-pro, pro, high school. You know, it's very hard to stick with those players and follow them throughout the season. So that's what I would uh, hope that the future is leaning towards with the WNBA that we have a longer season and players start staring more to building their brands and being able to supplement their incomes in a variety of ways at home. I want to you know, tap that, in um, go ahead, with the CBA yeah, ahead, though, because the CBA is now designed that you have to be home before tra or by training camp and it's going to be harsher penalties where um, you might not be employed. And so this year is going to be a little bit more lenient 
but they're going to have to start being home sooner than later because of how the CBA is structured. But there are more opportunities to make money, like Chastity was saying, within um, the United States. The WNBA has 10 PMAs this year, which are the player marketing, um, you know, the players who are in charge of the marketing, and there are 10 of them this year. Last year, there was only three. So we see um, more chances for them to make, you know, supplemental income while they're here. And then Athletes Unlimited is another way to, to make some money in, I think it's February this year in Dallas, where you, you stay in shape, you still um, play on a competitive level, but it's five weeks, one location, your friends can come, your family can come. And uh, it's a mix of uh, WNBA players and other professional players. And so it's, it's a nice little merger of that. And it's a player run type of league. And so it's just, it, I, I was present at that and it was seemed that the, the players were having fun. They, they were in great spirits and they love the player run type of aspect with that. They got uh, a full uh, incentivized way to play because it's a point system based with individual. Um, and then the top four each week get to coach. And so you get all those aspects of it. And then you have, um, several coaches, like actual coaches, like Pokey Chapman was there um, to help guide the players that are serving as coaches, but it's just a good structure for them to stay in, in the States. So between the PMA deals and in the CBA, the WNBA is trying to make it so that the players don't have to go overseas and the increased pay. Hopefully the next CBA signing, they'll have even more of a salary because you see the, the growing interest within the league. You know, Natalie, I, I want to go back to, to, to something you said uh, off the top. You know, you wear many hats for a brother from another, one of them, uh, social media guru. And I guess <clears throat> I can say the strength of social media is that everybody has a voice. Everybody's got that platform. Uh, the weakness of social media is that everybody's got a voice. <laughs> everybody's got a platform. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it's like giving the it's like giving the driver's license to everybody. Everybody shouldn't be behind a wheel. And, and at some point, you're like, damn. Stop driving. Stop driving. No, no, no. You should be driving right now. So you heard some uh, you heard some comments yesterday. What what were the comments that really that you wrestled with that or that you felt the need to respond to? <laughs> I definitely responded to some, but I probably should have took Ari's advice. And she said to keep, you know, block people um, and, and to keep your peace. And it's one of the things I try to do mostly. But um, you know, I anticipated the kind of comments that were going to come, which is unfortunate because I knew. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of, you know, calling Brittany a pothead. Um, you know, why, you know, like, why are we leaving her? There's this, I call it kind of like a fake outrage, a disingenuous outrage over, you know, oh, we need to bring the Marine home. And I'm not saying that we don't need to bring him home, but... Uh, you weren't this outraged or talking about it before you knew that it was a, a gay black woman who they were deciding to bring home. And I think there's underlying reasons for the backlash against bringing her home. She's an American. This is her home and we should be supportive of bringing her home. So just things like that. You break laws in a country, you, you know, this is what you have to do. And I feel like there's not a lot of, um, or I feel like there's not enough coverage, you know, sort of bringing some of the facts to the forefront. So for example, that she was prescribed to have that marijuana for, I mean, the, 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 um, the cannabis oil for, for pain management, right? And so, you know, whether or not your views on like, you know, weed or whatever it is, marijuana, like she did have a prescription for it, you know? And, you know, she explained that she was just packing in haste and it, it was in her bag. So, you know, we hear all the time, you have cases like Kyle Rittenhouse, things that come up in the U.S. and we ask for leniency, consider their age, consider these kinds of things. And this is less than an ounce, like under Russian law, under Russian law, she could have gotten a fine for it, you know, um, but instead they chose to give her prison time and sentence her to nine years to make her a political pawn. And that is so disheartening. And the fact that the a, a large portion of the country is not showing her love and is questioning why mm. we're fighting to bring her home. That's incredibly disheartening. And, you know, as a black woman, you know, it often feels like we're at the bottom of the totem pole. And unless we show love for each other and support each other and fight for one another, no one else will fight for us. And then Brittany has it even harder because she is a queer black woman. And so it's just, it's, it's saddening. It's disheartening. And I won't stop like fighting for her. And sometimes I will be in these Twitter streets defending her.
I mean, I had to hop in too, girl. Let me tell you. I'm sorry. I know this <laughs> no, it's good. I had to hop in too because they were like outraged about Paul, which is rightfully so. But the the difference is we were going, we were collectively coming, like we were coming together, activating for Britney. We were signing up for Britney. All this outrage I had not seen on my timeline until exactly the tweet, until um, Britney was was released. There are other prisoners released er like earlier this year, but the difference is she's a queer black woman. So we really have to dive into the fact like, hey, this outrage did not happen beforehand. And if, if you are this outraged about it, advocate. Activism is, is very real. Um, mobilizing for somebody is very real. And if you feel so deeply about it, get behind it. Sherelle said on CNN yesterday that her and Brittany, um, after decompression, will continue to fight for those wrongfully detained because they have gotten close to these families. And, you know, Sherelle just finished law school. She has a beautiful career ahead of her. Uh, I, I have no doubt in my mind. But it's the simple fact that She's already made a promise to the public. And even if she didn't, she didn't have to do that, first of all. Black women are always saved the day. But she's made a promise to the public that she, her and Brittany are going to dedicate themselves to this cause. And so for them to be so outraged and, and, and not use that energy to mobilize for Paul, that tells a lot about them, too. Both can exist. Like Tariqa said, people can walk and chew gum, right? We can, we can be overjoyed for Brittany and still want better for society. Absolutely. And I wasn't, I'm not going to lie to you and say I was considering, because I, I, I frankly was happy that my friend is coming home. I'm happy that this, this, this wonderful is returning home. Um, and those who are so enraged that Paul is still imprisoned, mobilize for it. Yeah, that's exactly. right. Oh, I love it. I, I think you said it. I think you said it beautifully in, in your tweet, uh, Ari. And I wonder uh, if you had thoughtful response. I think I know. <laughs> thoughtful responses or responses or like, ah, no, I'm just going to stick to my talking points. I really want to address the content of what you said. I think I know the answer. It's unfortunate. Yeah, but, so uh, final Twitter, word. Oh, go ahead. Twitter, Twitter is, um, is great because they hide a lot of replies from me. But I had people demanding that I stand up for Paul. And that's fine. Um, but they can, too. I, well, first of all, who are you to tell me who to activate for? And I will. But because social justice is in my blood. But not everybody's built like that. Some people just wanted their friend home. So they can get behind her as well. Right. Or it came out as well. That's right. Final, final word to you, Chastity. Uh, uh, just, just any thoughts on what we said here or, or something else that you want to say before we uh, uh, head to this break? No, I just appreciate all the support from the uh, coaches, Don Staley and different coaches around the um, league and, and college and in the pros and uh, NBA, you know, WNBA across the board. Just continue to keep this on the forefront. Um, I, I would like to say just for our culture personally, just athletes having a platform like the Don Staley's, like you, for them to have an extra burden to really continue to fight for uh, social causes and social injustices. I mean, it's a burden that other, some other races with those type of platforms, they don't have to, to do that. They can just focus on their job and their career. So it says a lot of, about the people who have these platforms, especially women of color, men of color, you know, uh, head coaches, uh, professional athletes that are stars, you know, to have to, uh, not have to, but that choose to, you know, fight and, and, and say things and, and tweet to uh, defend things that are going on uh, that are socially, you know, wrong. And um, it's a burden that's been put on us. Um, at the end of the day, we don't all share that with other races. Um, and I just hope one day, like, athletes and the people that are really living and working can come together and kind of brand together like it was back in the day. You know, Muhammad Ali was with uh, Malcolm X. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King was with Jackie Robinson. So I do think that hopefully in the future, athletes are the only ones that media go to because there are a lot of people who are doing the hard work and living it every day. And I just hope to see that come together. So coaches and athletes with already a big platform who are trying to be the best at their job don't have to solely take on that burden. Absolutely beautiful. I'm glad we've all come together today. Natalie, thank you. Ari, Chastity. Uh, and you, and look, everybody, Natalie, Natalie's already here, but we always say this. Uh, doors open. You can come home anytime. It's home. It's home here. So uh, please drop by anytime you want to talk about anything you want to talk about. We're here. Appreciate you. <laughs> thank you, Michael. Thank you. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>
Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.